Anselmo Toledo. I am a CG artist working in the video game industry. Um, uh, I made this uh, 3D model and hand painted texture based on this um, great concept artist by Konstantin Vavilov. So I was pretty much inspired by his art. So that's why I decided to make this um, video tutorial showing the workflow. Um, to make this uh, 3D model and also the hand painting texture. Um, in this case, as you can see at my right, I have the 3D model on, three, uh, on a flat shading mode. So there's no material definition or any shader attributes. So all the info it's on the hand painting texture, as you can see on my left, which is uh, all the volume, all the shader attributes and, and uh, color situation. So all the information it's just on the hand painting section. So hope you hope you guys enjoyed the video. So welcome aboard. Okay, so I'm here I'm starting the 3D modeling uh, in this case inside Maya. Since the prop has uh, simple shapes, I'm start blocking out directly in Maya. If the model um, will be a little bit more complex per se, I think that it would be a good idea to make a, a rough 3D sketch in Seabrush, just to to establish the overall shapes and later on um, making the retopology in here in Maya. For me, it's work, it works well inside Maya. So here, here I am. Uh, start blocking out um, these shapes. In this case, I start with the uh, with the dagger, with the upper part of the dagger. Uh, so I segment into like uh, three or four pieces, so I can concentrate on each of them step by step. And later on, I can I can merge merge them together maybe topological or maybe just putting putting on um like above the other elements without without uh combining topological like this part so in this case it will save some some triangles since the texture will be flat shade mode uh it will be not too much problem so here i'm as you can see i'm just trying to improve a little bit more the, the silhouette some of the details will depend or how much detail it will or on the silhouette somehow uh, it will depend on the camera angle if the details won't be appreciated too much we can just put it on the texture or you know faking based on the texture or just uh, putting just the overall shapes but i decided to put some kind of details on the handle dagger on those like uh, wings just to improve a little bit more the the silhouette uh, but all depends on the poly budget and camera angle so right now I'm just continue blocking out all those shapes as you can see just trying to to match a little bit more with those silhouettes so I'm just continue blocking out the shapes and later on as you can see I will be focused also on the optimization which is a very important part especially for video games we we always um, we can make a good use of triangles and be careful to don't leave uh, end guns or in some cases uh, non planar faces which can be affect on the process so be careful of that so as you can see I'm just continuing blocking out the overall shapes as I mentioned before just I'm just focusing on on the silhouette and now I will that now that I have more or less all the shapes I can start focusing on optimization the triangles and later on I will start the UVs 
as you can see right now I'm just put a planner mapping so I can start the UVs so I erase the back part of the sword since it will be symmetric symmetrical the back part of the sword so I can just work on this part and I have a uh, some kind of uh, 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 cuts at the beginning but I see that I can make another cut to improve a little bit better the UV space to have the the, mer the better resolution as as I can so as you can see I'm just moving around rotating and just uh, another thing to be aware of it it's to um, to have the texture resolution um, uh, even on all those UV Iceland and also another thing that uh, consider when you're working on the UVs it's to leave the enough space between one UV Iceland and another one that will be depending on the of the texture resolution if you're working with 64 uh, texture you will need a, a more space between one UV island and another one instead uh, or besides if you're working in a texture of 2k you can leave a, a, a less space between one UV island and another one because there will be more pixels between one UV island and another one so be be aware of that just have in mind so as you can see right now I'm just working a little bit between the overall shapes are uh, hardened and softened edges so I can just just uh, see a little bit better the shapes uh, and also I'm just working uh, with another filter here in Maya just to have the right um, quads and triangles uh, I don't want to leave any angons because there will be a problem for uh, the other departments like uh, ridging and skinning so be careful of that. I use another, I mean, I use a filter in Maya to check that uh, issues. And just to to end or finish this um, low poly modeling, I'm just optimize and re-update or update the UVs so they can have the right uh, shapes since I tweak a little bit the some part of the topology and shapes so they don't stretch too much so I'm just mirror the element and finishing the the harden and soften edges and this is what I have I think that it has good shapes and silhouette and now it's 386 triangles so I think that it can work okay so now I am at 3d code here I will start blocking out the um, super basic color of uh, for the dagger. It's very important to choose the, the right um, values, saturation and color since the beginning. Uh, so I'm just uh, start blocking out all the um, all these elements or segmentation like which will be the the blade, which will be like the wings area, the the um, the handle, and many other areas that we will need to 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 um, expose or reveal. Uh, right now, as you can see, I'm just start blocking out a little bit the volume for the blade. So I'm just uh, it's a simple shape. So I'm just uh, start blocking out like the the primary volume of these shapes. So now we'll continue with. Um, inner part of that blade and then moving moving downward to continue with the uh, specific design for that kind of uh, wings as you can see uh, so in this um, first stage I can say they will be it will be like more with a very planar um, texture very planar not too much uh, Mm, gradient uh, hand painting um, needed so just uh, like a specific um, just specific color values to establish like the design like in this case I'm working for the, this, um, the segmentation for the wings as you can see so all the info it's on flat shade mode so 
all the information will be just on the on the texture so i'm just continue blocking out all those elements of the design now i'm just make another layer and and starting blocking out the um, this design for the inner part of the blade it should be like the the center part so i'm just blocking out those design um continue with with this same uh design um, i can make a a new layer and once i start blocking out more more complex shapes i can make a new layer to don't uh, uh make any mistake on the on the layers that i have above and when i whenever i have a whenever i am agree with this design i can start merging some uh, layers so i do not have many or plenty layers so now you can see i'm uh, putting the right um, base color for the lower part of the blade and now i am putting a little bit of uh, volume reveal of the i'm revealing a little bit of the volume for the handle part of the dagger which is has this like uh, reddish oranges uh, color and start blocking those straps okay i'm just putting a little bit of uh, volume information playing with the uh, with lighting and shadows and later on i will I will focus more on on the shader or material definition. The first steps is to just to reveal the, the overall volumes. For this, you can use a uh, soften alpha, but I think that for me it depends on the situation. But I I like to start working with a harden alpha, so I can start like blocking some some part of the design or somehow. A little bit of the of the shader attributes or material uh, definition. So for me, it's a little bit uh, more artistically work with the hardened alpha. So as you can see, I'm just uh, I don't know why I put too much uh, like like uh, the material definition on that part, but I will just I need to focus more on the overall overall uh, details and volume information. So that's what I'm. I will do now. I will pass to another parts of the, another elements for the, for this dagger, and then just continue blocking out, the overall shapes and a little bit of, uh, not so much shader, but I will say just uh, volume and lighting information. So now I am passing into the wings, so I can continue moving forward with that. Uh, design or pattern so i'm just blocking out uh, those uh, volume information and also put a little bit more of like a an orange color because it was for me i think that it was too much yellowish or brownie so i'm putting a little bit more like an orange color based on the concept and i help this uh, stage by putting uh, another layer with a color blended mode so i can just uh, put uh, another color you will see me uh, later on me make uh, adding this new layer and putting a color a color mode to to try to mimic the right color values based on the concept and right now i i was reducing a little bit the contrast on those uh, cavity areas of the wings so just be careful of those areas So I will just continue blocking out this uh, overall mm, design, like the um, patterns or yeah, the patterns of the wings, which I think that right now it's a little bit darker. So I will continue just uh, putting the right color information. So right now I just put uh, this uh, overlay layer, and I just increase a little bit the. Uh, the lighting information on this part and so but right now i'm just putting a standard layer and just adding this like uh, lighting or high values for the top part of the wings which which is where the light will hit a little bit more this part right now i'm just working between symmetry and non-symmetry i work with symmetry for the 
external part of the wings, which it will be hard to to see this um, symmetry. And for the middle part of the handle, I uh, will work without the symmetry. So I cannot uh, expose too much this um, symmetry effect. So I'm just cleaning a little bit more the, those contrast on this part of the handle. This uh, middle part where the, around the, the green jewel. So I think that it will be like the main focus area, I think. I think it can be here or at the top part of the blade where the the lightest value has um, the lightest value of the blade it has on the left but i will see later on how it's it's react and not, and later when i have more all reveal all those uh, light volumes and shapes i will see where it can be a little bit more interesting but i think that that based on the green yellow um jewel it will be more in this center part of the of the sword so I'm just continue putting a little bit more of the, the right uh, lighting information and I will put and as you can see I put another layer in color mode so I can mimic a little bit better the color uh, that the concept has and continue just blocking out those those uh, shapes of the design so the this center part of the dagger I work it without symmetry so it looks more naturally it's always a little bit better so the less symmetry that we can have or we can expose the better uh, right here I'm just putting this like um, uh, weird effect but I think it's it's a little bit early to put these uh, details but I'm just I just want to to put that uh, color values so later I can just spread it out and put it on the right way on the right uh, levels and position. Uh, another thing here is to, I will say that it's a little it's a little bit tricky whenever you put uh, any details because at the beginning maybe we can just want to put uh, details and details all the way and it cannot be a good idea because it can distract the attention or or or, or not focus on the the very important area of the design because we are putting too much detail all all the in all the parts of the element it's like uh, making a composition so you need to be careful with all those details and don't go too much crazy with it just just to have in mind it's um it's something subtle something that you that you study and know where to put those details so you can you can uh, like attract the viewer on the right part of the elements you can do this by adding more lighting uh, uh, making a little bit more more of a contrast and also play with the saturation values so there's a lot of information also in the in the web regarding this theme Okay, so I'm just putting a little bit more like uh, texture details, like value information, like volume information. As, as you can see on the wings, I'm just uh, moving forward with this uh, design or concept details by putting the right uh, volume information. And also, I am just working a little bit with that. Now, um, this stage, I'm working a little bit, a little bit more with. Um, Mm, shader definition the shader definition will be some of the last uh, step um, it will be this step and the very last de um, stage it will be like putting all these um, uh, uh, very delicate details like scratch or nuts or any any wares that um, elements can have so you go from the primary shapes then reveal the volume, the overall design, and then just uh, once you have all those value on a good way, you can start blocking out the very smaller detail like a scratch and all that kind of uh, like a surface details. So as you can see, I'm always I'm always trying to to mimic the the color values and contrast 
um, based on the concept so i can make a, a use of a many a many many tools like um, playing with the saturation playing with another layers on color mode on uh, overlay multiply or soft light and any any of this kind of uh, blender mode so you can uh, you can tweak the overall illumination of the colors with, with no need of uh, destroying the information that you have done already regarding the overall volumes so right now I'm just uh, working a little bit with the uh, with this kind of a uh, rock um, yeah like a rock like a um, it's not a gel I, actually actually I was trying to make another texture variation just to see how it looks I will show you in the video a little bit later I think that um, this part of the dagger or texture was a little bit uh, simple so I was trying to to play with another another design another like material like in this case it will be like more transparency transparency texture something like yeah like a gel yellow jewel or something that has a little bit more of a refraction I was just I was just trying to play with it so I saved my my the original stone that I have done already so I was playing with a new one as you can see right now I'm playing with a new kind of uh, texture definition so I can just play with it just make another texture definition just to see how it can look and by the end of the day I, I respect the, the concept design but I was just trying to to play with it so I'm just uh, putting a little bit more of a uh, lighting information where it needed and just polishing a little bit more this uh, this test for this part of the of the sword texture but at the end of the day I I think that it was uh, very fancy <laughs> so I just uh, put the, the original the, the original stone greenish material I was just playing with it it's always good it, also it can be just like a material study it's mm, it, it's never bad to just continue practicing okay so I'm just continue uh, evolving the overall shapes and a little bit of uh, uh, material definition just a little bit this material definition it's a little bit more tricky so it will be good to to evolve this stage once you get the the, the right um, the right values on color information okay so I'm just working a little bit on this um, blade whenever you are um, I mean once you are working with this stage it's better to use this um, harder alpha just to have in mind so besides making this overall um, material definition and detail and uh, shapes I also put some like uh, subtle details you know like a scratch or dents or, or those kind of uh, details that can on some way reveal a little bit more the the material definition of any specific areas so I'm just continue with this part of the of the blade um, remember that if you want to make metal it depends on the kind of a metal but it's always to make a nice contrast nice contrast but be careful be careful if you want to make highlights you need to have a little bit darker values as, uh, on the side so we can make a little bit more of a contrast but it's a little bit tricky it's a little bit tricky it's always good to have uh, references yeah and right now I'm just uh, trying to mimic a little bit better the colors like you can see in the dagger or in the handle the handle part I'm trying to mimic the color a little bit better by putting uh, another layer on color mode it's just uh, we always have this um, this uh, layer mode to 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 improve or to tweak the texture as I was mentioned before it can be depending on the situation 
In this case, I'm, I, I was just using uh, color mode. Sometimes it can be um, overlay, multiply, you know, <laughs> also like the dodge uh, blending mode, which it will be like for, for, for adding these like uh, effects of metal or, or um, you know, like uh, bloom effect or like a massive, a massive effect. So it will depend on the needs. Uh, so you can you make use of uh, the blending layer modes. So it's very useful, very handy. You just play, you just need to know them and play with it. So I'm just continue with um, the um, overall um, information and a little bit of uh, shader on this down part of the dagger. Remember that uh, where to put uh, more details of the uh, texture so the this part of the dagger can has a little bit more of a can has less uh, saturation so it doesn't pops up too much so it doesn't capture too much the attention of the viewer so I think that it will be better to put more a little bit more of a saturation um, around the green jewel or stone area so it has uh, more interesting shapes to focus the um, the viewer. So I'm um, just continue. Right now I have I had a lot of saturation on this lower part of the dagger, but later on I will use another layer and reduce the saturation of it. You will see later later on. So I'll just continue blocking out some of the design here. I cannot see pretty much well the design, but I'm uh, just trying to to be as close as possible to respect the the concept design so I'll just uh, just continue playing with these um, tones and values for this part of the dagger which I think that it will be like the most important part of the dagger this area around the wings and green yellowish um, green um, jewel or stone and the top part of the blade on the top part of the blade which has the the this uh, where the light hits most this part of the blade which is like uh, another interesting part to to focus on so I'm just continue putting this kind of uh, uh, subtle details and texture details on this area so as you can see I'm working without symmetry so you can have a little bit of a more natural look. So I'm just continue putting these uh, subtle details. And anyways, if I want to improve or tweak a little bit the overall illumination, color or saturation and even value, I can do it just by these other blended modes. Also, I will go to to Photoshop later on, you will see to try to to have the, the right um, values but right now I'm just start uh, putting some details so I can have the uh, a better result of the material definition and just details to to improve a little bit the, a little bit more the hand paint hand paint painted uh, work just be careful where, where to put these details not put the details all the way on all the areas just uh, be careful of that and also as you can see from time to time I, I move my camera far away so I can see my my overall color my overall um, paint so I can see if I, it's it's going on the right way it's um, it's better to look the overall uh, texture from a little bit a more far away camera instead of um, of just putting so close to the details so right now I'm just <clears throat> moving forward now I'm uh, I will say that that now I can focus more on the material definition so I will start uh, I'm start uh, working on it so trying to put the right contrast on the metals um, there's always a little bit tricky this part because the contrasts are a little bit uh, delicate 
if you put just a little bit of a more values it can maybe just ruin the, the texture just be careful of that and just continue putting a, a little bit of uh, surface details remember to don't go too much crazy with these uh, details put it just the right amount of details in the right place okay so I'm just just moving forward I think that <clears throat> it will be a good idea right now to to play with the values yeah as you can see now I'm adding another color mode so I can try to mimic a little bit better the color regarding the the concept art so um, yeah I have a mimic a little bit better some part of the of the color information I'm just trying to put the, this kind of a surface details just to moving forward okay so um, talking about the hand painting texture process uh, it's always good to to be aware of the of the right values don't focus too much on the details um, at the beginning first of all just trying to put the right values even if your strokes um, your your strokes are like a uh, very sketchy or very rough just just the important thing here is to to have the right values later on it will be more easy to to polish those strokes instead of uh, instead of or putting if you are working with the subtle details and you don't have the right values it will be harder to tweak or polish these errors so the first thing is to focus on the right values so for that you will you'll need to <laughs> evolve your your eye your your vision it's a little bit tricky this kind of uh, texture process you, you need to uh, see all those color variations saturations and light values and just to make like an overall composition on those um, on, on a specific uh, prop or element so right now I'm just passing into uh, Photoshop to put uh, <clears throat> the right values so as you can see I use the replace color just on this middle part of the dagger or of the blade I mean just to me just try to try to mimic uh, the colors based on the concept so we can always make make use of um, plenty of tools and they are very handy very handy in this case I was using replacing color which it, it will uh, preserve the, your details and it will just change the overall colors and right now I'm here I'm just uh, reducing the contrast on those black areas which it's very very bad to leave those black areas <laughs> just be be careful of that not it's not good to work with with completely black colors or or white colors just have in mind so right now I'm just trying to put the right color values for the base of the jewel or the green um, stone and again right now I'm just playing with the left keep color and right now you can see it's a little bit better it's it's mimic a little bit better the overall illumination and right now I'm just putting a position map that I bake it so easily in a in a substance painter mm, I don't know I'm just uh, tweaking a little bit the, the overall uh, texture sorry and but right now I will in a few moments I will add um, this layer of um, uh, gradient map that one from substance it will put uh, more lighting values at the top of the design and a little bit uh, darker values at the bottom so you can expose a little bit more for depthness and also uh, focus uh, some areas of interest so this is what I have done on the end of the day so hope you guys enjoyed the process and maybe 
learn something interesting or maybe just be inspired anything that <laughs> can be positive on your on your career so thank you for watching and hope i can see you on the next one Thank you.